Good morning. Uh, welcome to the fifth NAVAT meeting. Um, and NAVAT, to remind you, means a navigation towards anesthesia targets. We all have to know our targets, otherwise we are clueless in what direction we go to. Um, uh, we would like to thank all the people uh, of the organizing committee, the chairs, the co-chairs, and of course, Geert, the host, for making this possible. Obviously, we also like to thank all the sponsors for making this meeting possible. I want to introduce this meeting by saying a couple words about the two of us, Jan and me. We have something in common. We have a common history. And that common history actually starts in Turnout, Belgium. And some of you may say, well, Turnout, Belgium, that's just a little city uh, northeast of Antwerp, very close to the Dutch border. What can they have in common? Because Jan grew up in, in Heist op den Berg, if I'm correct, and I grew up in, I grew up in Turnout, actually. Could it be that Beerse has something to do with it? And some people may recognize the name Beerse. Um, I don't know whether everybody does. Maybe the um, international people don't know. But Beerse is actually where Paul Jansen has his, uh, um, or had his uh, uh, pharmaceutical company. It actually was founded in Turnout, the company, but then he quickly moved to Beerse, where he expanded very quickly. So this is Paul Jansen. These are not all, but some of the drugs that were developed by Janssen Pharmaceuticals, which is a, quite an impressive list. And some of these drugs have been used extensively and are still used extensively by the anesthesia community. Eight of these drugs have been included in the World Health Organization model list of essential medicines, and that's quite an impressive feat for one company. What does it have to do with our common history? Actually, not very much, but that was a nice story to tell. <laughs> <laughs> what we really have in common about Turnout is that we both did part of our anesthesia residency there. And why in Turnout? Well, um, the hospital where we did part of our residency is a community hospital, St. Elizabeth Hospital. In those days, it was a non-academic training institution. They offered two years of anesthesia training, and then you had to go elsewhere. Actually, the hospital has quite a legacy in not just Belgium, but all, all of Europe and even the world. Because these were the first people, actually, who used low-dose bupivacaine for uh, pain control in obstetrics. We had visitors coming to that place from all over Belgium and even from France and Germany and the Netherlands to learn the technique. When I went to Pittsburgh and I told the people in Pittsburgh that I had experience with 0.1 to 5% bupivacaine in Belgium, they said that doesn't work. And I said, sure it works because I've seen it work. No, that cannot work, it's not enough. I said, it does work because I've done it myself. And they said, well, Belgian women are different from American women. <laughs> <laughs> um, the leaders at that moment uh, of the department were Leo Vaz and Moritz Soutens. And as I said before, they sent their uh, trainees elsewhere. Depending on their uh, success in passing the exams to go to the United States. So or they, get, they did go to the United States or they did go elsewhere in Europe for further training. Now, you may recognize the name Achille Blaert. He is the first author on that paper about bupivacaine. Actually, Achille Blaert is a Belgian anesthesiologist who moved to the United States in the 1960s. As you can tell, the paper was written way, way, way after he contributed to the technique. So he moved to the U.S. in the 1960s. He first uh, went to Cleveland, and then he moved to Pittsburgh. He is a, quite a famous researcher. Um, a very dedicated and excellent anesthesiologist, excellent clinician, but he also did research in monkeys with thiopental and cerebral protection. 
And that his, um, his very famous study about thiopental amelioration of brain damage after global ischemia in monkeys. He actually put a tourniquet around the neck of the monkeys and strangled them. So there is a connection between the St. Elizabeth Hospital and Pittsburgh uh, through Ashia Blaird. And therefore, the turnout residents would go to Pittsburgh for further training. And this is the list of all the anesthesia residents who went to Pittsburgh. There are 10 of them. The 11th one, Mark van Hoof, went to uh, Chicago because the connection with Pittsburgh got kind of lost. And there was a new connection that was formed with uh, Chicago. Although, unfortunately, that didn't last very long because the department didn't accept FMGs anymore in Chicago. This is the three of us brainstorming during and after dinner. Ashiel Blair in the middle. We were always talking about anesthesia, research. Um, so that's our common history. Turn out Pittsburgh, USA. That's what we have in common. And that's why this is on the flyer also that you all have received. This is a picture of Pittsburgh. Most people think that Pittsburgh is a dirty city with a steel industry. It's not true anymore. It was before 1960s, 70s. But then it got cleaned up and is one of the most livable cities in the United States. I, I still miss, uh, miss Pittsburgh. It's a wonderful place. So this is why Pittsburgh is on the brochure because of our common history, but there is another reason and that we have two speakers that are coming from Pittsburgh. Andy Kofke, who was in Pittsburgh between 88 and 96, and he is uh, a, a true expert in toxicity of inhaled anesthetics uh, after prolonged exposure. He is a well-known neuroanesthesiologist also. And of course, Michael Pinsky is still there, and I don't have to introduce him because he is uh, world-renowned for his knowledge about physiology, especially cardiopulmonary physiology, heart-lung interactions. And he's actually going to give us two lectures.